I would never want to be described as a manipulative person, but I am very okay with being described as a manipulative user. Today we're talking about our favorite math tools and ways you can use them in your math classroom. We love to use math manipulatives in our math instruction when we are introducing new concepts to our learners. It is so helpful when you can have a concrete object for students to interact with. We, for example, are always going to pull out a real item when we're making equal groups in multiplication. That way students can physically see, all right, three groups of three, I have three things in each circle, I have nine items total. Using a math manipulative can really help to make concepts more concrete for your learners. Another reason why we love to use math manipulatives throughout our math instruction is because it is built in differentiation for our learners. Think about your student who's struggling in fractions. They conceptually don't understand where the numerator is coming from and where the denominator is coming from. Sounds like a great opportunity to break out the fraction tiles for your students so they can see where those two parts are coming from and it's gonna hit both their visual and their tactile learning styles. We suggest using math manipulatives in small group instruction. And the reason we don't break out our totes of counters for whole group instruction is just from a classroom management perspective. It's infinitely easier to keep seven students on track with using their manipulative correctly than it is to keep 21 students on track using their math manipulatives correctly. And it's really important that our students are using these tools correctly. So by using them only in small group instruction, you can guarantee students are doing the right things with them and you can support the skills that you're using the manipulatives to teach. Also means you're gonna have to keep less sets of each manipulative. And if I can find a storage solution anywhere, I'm game. Today I'm gonna to share my seven must have math manipulatives. These are important in any classroom, no matter if you're a second grade teacher or a fifth grade teacher. These are the ones that I would always make sure I have ready to go at my small group table. Manipulative number one is counters. I think counters are amazing because you can use them for so many things. They have them in all different colors, shapes, and sizes now. A lot of times, I'll end up grabbing cute packs of erasers and using those as my counters. I love it if we're dividing, boom, you automatically have an abundance of items you can divide with. Also, counters are great to use as game pieces in your math fact fluency or if you're running games in your independent or hands-on station. Counters are number one on my list because you can use them for everything. Manipulative number two are shapes. A lot of times people think shapes are only going to be helpful during their geometry unit. And I want you to remember, you can use shapes for so much more besides counting the sides of your parallelogram in your geometry unit. Shapes can be used a lot like counters and I love to use squares in my area and perimeter unit as students are finding the distance around and the area inside a shape. Shapes are hugely important for every grade level math classroom. I like foam shapes because they're quieter. Must have number three are base 10 blocks. I cannot imagine doing my place value unit without the use of base 10 blocks. These are an amazing visual for students as you're practicing, identifying the place value of digits, and then when you roll to addition and subtraction, it is so great to have students work with these as they visualize regrouping, moving from the different places within the number. Base 10 blocks are hugely helpful and very important to that conceptual understanding of how our numbers work. Item number four is probably the one thing I would save in a flood. Fraction tiles or fraction circles are so incredibly helpful for fraction instruction, especially if you're teaching in a grade where fractions are a new concept for students. Students will struggle to segment shapes into equal parts, and we know that equal part is so important when you're working in fractions. Fraction tiles and fraction circles have that solved for your students because they're always going to be the right size. I use fraction tiles through my small group lessons for my entire fraction unit because they make such a difference for my students. 
Snap cubes are another important manipulative to have on hand in your math classroom. They can be used much like counters and I love to use them when I am teaching one digit addition and subtraction because right there they can break apart, they can add them together. It's a great visual tool. Another great manipulative to have available to your students is real money. And by real money, we mean the nice plastic stuff. Students in every grade level are going to come across word problems that focus on spending money, buying things, selling things. Money is an amazing manipulative to support students as they work through those problems. Even more so, if you're in a grade that teaches money explicitly, you're gonna want concrete examples for your students. If I'm saving my fraction tiles in the flood, the other thing I think I might have to grab are my tiny clocks. Teaching time, it is so helpful when students can have a concrete visual and can hold the clock in their hand. As you're talking about the minute hand and the hour hand and how they both move all the way around the clock, it can be so helpful for students to see that. Think about when you get to the skip counting around the minutes. It's great when students can take that minute hand and move it along with you. Last but not least, my favorite tool to give to my mathematicians and one I keep all over my classroom are dice. So many things you can do with dice. Multiplying, roll two dice, multiply them together. Adding, roll two dice, add them together. There's so many things you can do with dice and it's great to have them available for any math games you're running in your classroom as well. I have to tell you, my personal favorite are foam dice because they are nice and quiet when students are utilizing them. Tell me in the comments, what math manipulative did I miss? Are you a strong believer in ruler usage? Do you love having any other tools available for your students? Tell me in the comments, what math tool could you not live without? I hope I've given you some ideas for math manipulatives you can get working at your small group table. Who knows, you might go and dig through that closet today to find these supplies and get them ready for use by your students. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we hope you have a not so windy day. Bye.